Okay, good morning everybody and Hazak Baru. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful <coughs> uh, Monday morning. Shavua Tov everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us as we study a new parasha this week, Parashat Tesaveh. Tesaveh deals with a continuation of last week which dealt with the Mishkan and the building of the temple, the, uh, the house for God. Uh, Tesaveh continues along those lines, slightly, slightly, but a little bit different because last week, uh, last week was about the house. This week is all about the people that worked in the house. This week is about the Kohanim, the, the clothing of the Kohanim. Of course, we know that the first Kohen ever was who? Who was the first Kohen? Kohanus. Kohanim came from, they started by Aharon. Very good. People don't realize Kohen is not a tribe. It's not one of the 12 tribes. Kohen is an offshoot of the tribe of Levi. Levi is one of the 12 tribes. He was the third son of Yaakov. He's the third tribe. Levi had great-great-grandson Aharon. And from Aharon, within Leviim, Aharon started the Kohanim family. So every Kohen, you should know, if you're a Kohen, you know you for sure came from Aharon. Okay? I once told a guy, he told me his last name was a, whatever, a Kohen last name. I said, what? You know that you're a direct, direct, direct son from Aharon? I started crying. He's like, oh my God, really? I said, yeah, of course, you're a Kohen. Every Kohen is from Aharon. <laughs> right? person doesn't realize that sometimes. So because the Perashat deals with the Kohanim, Perashat Tesaveh, it's all about the Kohen. Therefore, uh, Moshe, by the way, his name is M.I.A. His name is not in the Perasha, which makes sense. Moshe's name, he, this is not his Perasha. He's out. It's the only Perasha without his name from the beginning, that where he's born, all the way till his death. Every parasha has his name except for ours, Tesaveh. Because it's not your parasha. It's, it's a Haron's parasha, so to speak. Okay. The parasha begins, Ve'ata Tesaveh b'nei Israel. God says to Moshe to command the Jewish people, Ve'ikhu elecha shemen za'idzach. Let them bring for you pure olive oil. Shemen za'id is olive oil. You have to bring olive oil. Zach. What's Zach? extra virgin, what we call the pure, the first drop, that's the only drop that was allowed to be used for, the Pasuk says, Lama'or, to light the menorah. You could use the other drops for the flour, for the korbanot, but the first drop is the drop that's needed for the lighting of the menorah in the Beit Amikdash, which is a beautiful idea, by the way, because if you think about the oil that you have, if you had two levels of oil, A grade, top level oil, and then second grade, which one would you use for cooking? And which one would you use for lighting? You would use the lower level for lighting and the higher level for cooking. God says the opposite. I want for me the higher level for the lighting. Right? The extra virgin, the first drop to be used for lighting. So God says to Moshe to please make sure you collect besides for all of the other things they needed to collect. They had to collect gold and silver, right? They also need oil. Okay? Whoever wants to bring oil that's another donation that we could use in order to use to light the menorah when we build it. Beautiful. That is, <clears throat> that is what the perasha begins. And it goes on. Uh, and it goes on in talking about the rest of the clothing of the Kohen Gadol. Okay. There is a pasuk, my friends, in Mishle, as we study today, Rabbeinu Bahye. Those that are joining us for this year know that uh, Rabbeinu Bahye likes to begin every perasha with a beautiful pasuk. A pasuk in Mishle. Mishle is the wisdom of Solomon. Shlomo HaMelech, let's not forget, was the wisest of all men. And he wrote a book called Proverbs. He wrote a book called Mishle. In this book, every pasuk is filled, packed with words of genius, words of encouragement, words of uh, advice, brilliant, brilliant things that really, <clears throat> all the books that you find today, all the ideas, you can open up a book today from whoever you like, but you should know all of the wisdom really comes from the Torah, from Shlomo HaMelech. Very, very, very smart book. He took all of his book and he put it into writing in this book, Mishle. All of his wisdom, he put it in Mishle. Each pasuk is a whole class in itself. Each pasuk is a book. You can write a book on each pasuk, on each verse. He says over here, he connects to our parasha. There's a beautiful pasuk. Shemen uktoret ismah liv. Shemen oil. Uktoret, the incense, 
We know every day they brought, there was two Mizbeahs, remember? There was the big one, outdoors, that they walked onto, that they threw the animal pieces onto it. There was the smaller one, indoors, that you couldn't walk on, it was tiny. And that they only used for the ketoret every day to bring the ketoret. It was a recipe of 11 different ingredients, we call it incense. Okay? Uh, the word ketoret comes from the word, well, we translate it as smoke, right? Because it made smoke. But ketoret comes from the word kesher, to tie. It made a connection between us and God, ketoret. Okay. Shlomo Melech says, Shemen uktoret ismah lev. Vemetek re'ehu me'atzat nafesh. Oil and incense gladden the heart. Umetek re'ehu, the sweetness of a friend, is better than atzat nefesh. So what exactly is Shlomo Amalek saying here? So on a simple level, he's talking about the shemen and ktoret. The shemen and ktoret, our rabbis say, that we had in the temple. Midrash says that Shlomo Amalek is talking about our perasha, the oil that we used for the lighting of the menorah, the ketoret that we used to bring up on the small mizbeah, the lighting and the ketoret, yismah lev, they brought a lot of joy to Hashem. Yeah, reyach nihoach, it was a aroma, it was a beautiful scent. Hashem, when we brought the ketoret and the shemen, when we lit the menorah and we brought the, the, the ketoret for God, that was beautiful. Yismah lev. But Rabbeinu Bahia says, it can be also talking to every one of us. He's saying over here, Shlomo Amalek is talking to us, really, how we should, how we should treat a stranger. Let's read the words. <coughs> and I apologize if I sound a little bit uh, congested today. But here we go. Shlomo HaMelech, Allah Shalom, Yazir ala Adam, Bakatuv Azeh. Shlomo HaMelech is warning a person in this text. Lerahim ala Ger. To have mercy on a Ger. What's a Ger? A Ger is a stranger. A stranger, somebody who is new. Somebody who doesn't necessarily fit in. Right? There's always strangers. There's a stranger in the shul. There's a stranger maybe at, off in the office. Is a stranger to the business. So Shlomo Melch is telling you that you should have mercy on a ger, a stranger. He's not next to his place of birth, his hometown where he was born, uh, where, he, where he's comfortable. He, is, he doesn't know the lay of the land. He doesn't know how things work over here. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know the tax rules, right? People that are strangers, they don't know things. So you have to help them. But really the Torah already warned us that we have to help stranger. This is not really something that Shlomo is telling me. This is something that already I know from the Torah. Torah wrote many times, 36 times, not to take advantage of someone who is foreign. Not with words, and not with money. The Pasuk says as an example, You cannot take advantage of a, of a stranger. You should not oppress. And you know, God says, the nefesh again, you know what it feels like to be a foreigner. Because you were a foreigner in Egypt, etc. So therefore, really, Shlomo HaMelech, <coughs> what's he telling me of here? Not to bother a stranger? The Torah says that. I don't need Shlomo for that. He says, no, look at this. Shlomo HaMelech is coming over here and adding a new idea, a novel element. That a person who is wandering foreign from his place, if you find someone stranger, you got to help him in two ways. You see, the Torah says to help him in one way. But the truth is, Shlomo HaMelech is expounding and saying that really, the Torah wants you to help him in not one, but two ways. Ha'ahat, first way, like the Torah itself says explicitly, she has speak lo mezonotav. You got to give him his food. The guy needs money. The person needs help. They need a loan. They need, uh, they need advice. They need something. You got to give it to them. You got to help the stranger. Give him the mezonot. Hasheni, she has been lo panim. But secondly, more than giving them the food or the money they need, is giving them yasbir lo panim, giving them what we call a nice face, giving them a smile, giving them encouragement. Vehenehu nikshari makatuv, and really the pasuk is connected to the pasuk above it that says ketepor no detet minikane. The same way you have a bird that's far from its nest, it's far from its niche, it doesn't feel comfortable where it is. It's foreign. It's a stranger. Can ish no komo so to a person who is a stranger, and a person like a bird, when you're not in your zone, when you're not in the element, when you're not in your environment, 
It's you're, 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 you're uncomfortable. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn. And the Pasuk says, Shemin uktorit. Shlomo HaMelech says, you got to help them, first of all, with Shemin. What's Shemin? Shemin, oil. Ketorit, the smoke. That's referring to the physical food. How do you cook? You put oil. It's the first ingredient. How do you, when you cook, what happens? There's ketorit, there's smoke. The food is over here used. Shlomo HaMelech is calling it oil and smoke. So over here, Shlomo Melch is saying that you have to make sure you give the guy Shemin Ketoret. You got to give him the food that he needs. However, you can't stop there. Od, you got to give him Metek Re'ehu. You got to give him a sweet smile. You got to give him words of encouragement. Vezehu Metek Re'ehu Sheyam Tiklo Dvarav Ve'asbarat Panav. You got to help him with also your words you know in life in life it's not always about what we do it's not always about do we give money a lot of it is how we give the money same same food same food sometimes it can be great and sometimes not so great think about a restaurant why do you choose one restaurant over another think about it why one restaurant you like to go the other one no they both serve the same exact carrots the same exact steak, the same exact potatoes, the same, everything is the same. Why is one restaurant, let's go back there to that one. The answer is because it's not about the steak. It's about how they cook the steak. It's about the flavoring in it. The metikut, matok, sweetener, sweet, matok. What's matok? Metik re'ehu. The flavor. In life, my friends, it's all about the flavor. It's all about the extra spice, the extra taste, the extra little uh, uh, sweetener, the salt. Imagine you come home one day, your wife makes you a meal, you eat it, <clears throat> it's very bland. Missing salt, too much salt. You say to her, honey, everything okay for you? You had a, you had a hard day? What's going on? Something happened with the food? What, what, what happened? You're not feeling good? Your COVID hit you? Your taste buds are not working? She, imagine, she says, wow, what's the problem? She says, no, it's the food is in... A little bit, uh, just a little bit uh, missing some flavor. So imagine the wife says to the husband, what do you care? The nutrition is there. Eat the food and be quiet. You get your nutrition, you get your nutrients, you get your protein, you get your uh, vitamin C, you get your this, your that. You're good. Fiber, it's all there. Eat it and be quiet. <laughs> right? How would you feel? How would you feel so good? Is she right? Technically, she's right. She's right, all the, all the vitamins are here, but it's, it's very wrong. Because we all realize, right, in life, it's not about just the food. It's about the food having with it the amazing flavor, the metikut, right? I could eat a tea. I could drink a tea. I can't eat tea. No, I can't. I could drink a tea. I'm not that uh, talented. I could drink a tea. <laughs> I could drink tea. That's with, with honey, with salt, with uh, sugar, or... I could drink tea without. The difference is, one of them is enjoyable, one of them is not. In life, you could help someone. You could give them. The person in jewel comes to collect. They put their hand out. So you have two ways. You could give them the money and say, okay, have a good day. Right? Go ahead. I got to go. Or you could give them metek re'ehu. You could give them with a smile. You could give them with encouragement. You could give them and help their soul, help their, help, help their mental state. You say, you know, How's it going? What are you up to? I hope you get out of this. I hope you have success. I hope you have a refuah A person could come to you and say, listen, I need help. I'm stuck. I need money. Could you collect for me for the next month? I need $2,500. So either you could say, uh, okay, I'll try to get it. Or you could say, I'm going to try to get it. You know, I really hope you call me in a few days saying that the deal that you have on commission waiting actually went through and you're going to get paid. And actually, it's going to be such a big deal that you're going to pay me because you're going to want to help because you have ma'asid to give. You see the difference? The difference between helping someone and helping someone. One of them, you're helping them. One of them, you're helping them with a little bit of sweetener. You're adding a little bit of spice and it's all about the spice in life. Spice changes everything. Spice is the reason you go back to a restaurant or you don't. It's the extra flavoring. The extra taste. Allah Melech wants to make sure that we're not just helping the Ger. We're not just helping a stranger, a foreigner. You help him with a smile. Help him with words. Help him with chizuk. Give it to them, but encourage them. 
Say, I, you know why I'm helping you? Because I believe in you. Because I know you're not going to need it forever. I know that next week you're going to get back on your feet. Give them. It's a difference of a world, my friends. You look at sometimes how people give. It's very sad. Sometimes we do, we give. But it's void of any feeling, any live. It's very, very cold. It's um, just, you know, giving. But it's like, you make the guy who you gave to feel like dirt. Sometimes you see people, they're in such a rush, they have to go to work, I, gotta, I don't have time. Say, here, just take it, leave me alone. Okay, say thank you, all right? Yeah, you should be happy that I'm helping you. I don't have time for you, all right? The irony is, most of the time we get to work, and what are we doing? We're wasting our time on Netflix and YouTube and games. We have time, most of the time we have time, right? So I'm saying, make sure in life, my friends, when you're giving people, when you're helping someone, help, but also help with shaman, with, don't only give them the shaman, don't only give them the oil, but you got to also give them the metek re'ehu, give them a little kind word, give them some encouragement, give them a little bit of hizuk. It's the difference of a world. You help someone like that, you could change. If you give someone, they say, if you give someone a fish, you fed them for a day. If you give someone a smile, you can help them feed themselves for life. You understand? The goal is not for me to give you fish. I can give you shit. I can give you food. I can give you oil and cooking. But I want you to be self. I want you. I want to help you. I want you to be able to help yourself. And all you can do that when you give someone chizuk. You give someone encouragement. Well, right? That's such a powerful idea. Yaakov Avinu on his deathbed, he blesses his children. You know what he says? He says like this. He says, Hachlili enayim miyayin. Your eyes are red from wine. You ever heard the expression bloodshot? Where does that come from? It comes from right here. Yaakov Avinu, chapter 49, Pasuk 12. Hachlili enayim miyayin. Your eyes are red from wine. You drink so much, you're bloodshot. Ulben shinayim mehalav. And your teeth are going to be white from milk. Okay? The back then they didn't have Colgate. They didn't have whitening strips. How do you get white teeth? You got to drink milk. Right? You drink milk, now it's white. But Yaakov Avinu, I think, is saying much deeper. Yaakov Avinu is saying, Ulben Shinaim. To make someone's teeth white, to make someone's teeth lavan, you show someone, let them smile, let them be happy in life. That's much greater than halav. That's much greater than giving them halav. What's halav? Milk. You give someone money, it's okay. But you make them smile, it's much, much greater. To make them smile is the, is the greatest gift you could ever give somebody. So this is really what Shlomo HaMelech is saying. Again, simply he's talking about the Shemin that gave God a smile. But he's talking to every one of us. The Shemin, the Ketoret, the help that we give to people. Someone that's in need. Someone that's not in a good place. Don't just give them. You have to give them, Shlomo HaMelech is saying, with metek re'ehu. Give them with an extra word, a little bit of encouragement. The Gemara, matter of fact, says, that the reward of giving charity really comes down to the chesed shebo, the kindness that was in it, in it, in the tzedakah. You gave, beautiful. But how did you give? Did you give, just take it? Za'lan, take it, go ahead, leave me alone. I don't have time, I gotta go. Just take your money and, and, and be happy that you're on the list, that you're getting help. Be happy that I recognize, be happy that I'm stopping for you. Or, 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 person could stop and look at the person. Give them encouragement. Give them words. Give them sweetness. Metek, my friends, life, life, let's be honest, right? Life is all about the flavoring. The metek, the extra sweet, sweetener that we put, that we add into the coffee, into the tea, into the soup, all the extra flavoring. It all comes down to that. It makes a difference of a world. Whether or not <coughs> something is enjoyable or not enjoyable. We should be zokhe to be able to always help the stranger. And the stranger, by the way, there are many strangers. A stranger doesn't have to be someone who you never saw. A stranger can be someone who doesn't really feel like they fit in so much to the community. So who doesn't feel like they belong so much to the shul. Maybe it's a stranger in the office. Someone new to the business. You give the person... I know it's hard in the beginning, but don't worry. It's worth it. Later on, it pays out. Right? Give them, not just shaman. Don't just give them the oil. 
Don't just give him the milk. Don't just give him the food or the sustenance or the actual item. The nutrition you can eat. You can eat technically a piece of steak and you get the nutrition. But is the steak melting in your mouth? Right? Is it butter? Is it uh, filled with beautiful flavor? Then that steak is a very different type of steak. That's umete kreehu. That's giving sweetness of a friend. Hashem should bless us to always be able to help those around us, both with the shemen, both with the met- matok, both with the oil, and the sweetener and everything in between. Okay, we'll stop over here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Karolin, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.